Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make some homemade tabletop battlefield terrain. So the major components of this I found um, mostly around the house. Um, I've got this um, plastic uh, cut for my double cream from Tesco, which will form the primary fuel container or fuel cell. It's got a super cool shape, it works really well. Uh, also got this little doobie whacker, which is a um, spare refiller from a bathroom spray. I think it's got a very cool shape. Obviously, going to chop it here um, to be the secondary fuel cell. Then, of course, is some styrofoam, um, some packing styrofoam from a, a PC I, I just recently bought, and then some one millimeter board. I actually bought this specifically from Amazon for this task. It's got, a, I think, it's pretty much the perfect um, uh, thickness, both to be the base of the piece of terrain and also any metal sheets. I want to put that on the um, uh, the model. Next is then um, a bit of spare or old sprue. Obviously, chop off these parts and uh, clean it up to make it look like pieces of piping or piping. And then for final detail, will be this bit of spares. I'll be using this flat pit and these two little doobie whackers from the uh, Manticore kit. And from the Sentinel kit, there's some super cool um, sort of charge units here. This is for the multi-laser and this is for the laser cannon I'll be using on the um, kit as well. So it's important when you're um, doing this work to make sure you use a nice sharp blade to replace it if uh, necessary. Um, helpful definitely when you cut the styrofoam, you want it to be a nice sharp blade. Um, otherwise if it's blunt, it actually sort of will dislodge some of the little bubbles that um, the styrofoam is made up with. Um, and you can see here that I'm moving quite deliberately and slowly and lying on the, um, the sharpness of the blade to actually achieve this nice fi uh, finish here. If the blade was blunt or you rush it, you actually pop the bubbles out. Uh, makes it look a bit disfigured. Next, I'm measuring up um, the bit of card. Um, and the key piece of advice here is don't try and uh, cut it in one big foul swoop. Do it several times. Um, and again, rely upon the, um, the sharpness of the blade to achieve it. You can see I'm measuring up all the bits I uh, require. It's pretty um, haphazard, no real science to it. Uh, but just using a piece of uh, small water got spare as a ruler. Now using um, a handsaw to cut away um, part of the secondary fuel cell so to say, um, just a matter of sort of hacking away at it. I chose this point here because it's probably the easiest to do because otherwise you'll slip but um, later in the video I actually see I've got to cut more of it off and it actually makes it quite hard to make it nice and flat. But just use your handsaw to chop it away. Now using um, some sandpaper I'm um, roughing up the surface of both fuel cells, both this little plastic uh, doobie whacker and also the uh, double cream cup. The reason why is it makes it easier for the paint to stick because um, you put it straight on the, um, the unfinished plastic and actually sort of uh, takes cut several layers for it to adhere to the, uh, the surface. So with all the pieces prepped, it's now into gluing them together um, using a hot glue gun. Um, it's really effective on styrofoam because it, it dries really quickly um, you can use uh, PVA glue to glue the board to the styrofoam, but it takes ages to dry. It's like an overnight drying process. And also, if I actually starts to warp um, the styrofoam, it actually starts to bend it and twist it. Um, you can see on the secondary fuel cell here, I'm actually using the glue around the, uh, the base of um, the piece because I chopped off more than I had to, more than I wanted to, and I couldn't get a perfectly symmetrical cut. So I'm sort of using it like um, a weld mark. Um, on the steel plating. Now just uh, some smaller detail with a bit of sprue um, and some departs from the manta core to create some light piping between the two fuel cells and very important here that I'm using super glue for plastic to board and then of course plastic cement between the two plastic types. Right now onto making some texturing for the, uh, the styrofoam to make a rockcrete or cement finish. I actually use garden sand for this. Um, what you're going to do is let it dry overnight in your cup and then remove any bits of uh, large stone or bits of twigs, etc. Now using a sieve, um, this will obviously ensure none of those final stones or larger pieces end up in the final product. Um, you then mix it in with some PVA glue. I suggest starting off with less PVA glue and adding more as you try to get the required sort of um, texture. You want to get it to almost like a guess bit of a paste finish. And then using this, um, the brush or whatever you're using to apply it onto the... Um, the model, just spread it around so it's become quite um, even. It's not going to be perfect. Um, something else that can help is just using your fingers um, to apply it on. If you are worried about sort of um, from a safety point of view, you could just wear some gloves, but this stuff isn't too toxic, it should be okay. But just mess that into place so it's quite um, even. 
Cool, so the texture is dried overnight. Um, now time to start painting uh, this model. Um, you can see on the uh, plastic cup, actually, if you've got to rough up the top of the top of it, so the paint actually um, takes a bit more work to make it adhere. Had to do several layers, um, as opposed to you can see the roughed up areas that it adheres really well. I think key piece here is um, probably steer away from using your GW or Army Painter paint, which is quite expensive for large surface areas like this. Uh, truth be told, I'm actually using some Tamiya paint, which is leftovers for me from um, uh, from years ago, so I don't feel too bad using that stuff up. For the Rock Creek cement, I've actually mixed satin black with rust grey uh, to achieve that bluish finish. You can see how well the satin uh, black adheres onto the board. It's quite thirsty, so to say, so you have to use a fair bit. And then, of course, doing some dry brush work with rust grey on the uh, cement to give it a nice uh, finish as well. I think uh, dry brushing is a really good way to go on large surface models like this because otherwise it's just too much detail. And I'm also using a metallic grey, again, on the steel plating. Um, to achieve a bit more of a finish. As I said, it works really well on large surface models like this. You don't want to do it too, too much detail. Um, and as it gets onto it, you can see where I do the, uh, the charge pack from the multi-laser. Um, here, and it responds really well um, to the dry brushing. It saves you so much time. Finally, um, using a black shade. I've made this myself. It's just my satin black from AK Interactive mixed with some water. Probably don't use your Nguyen oil from GW because it costs a fortune. Um, but I think here, I think typically it's better to water it down more than you want to and then sort of add paint on, otherwise it's just too thick and heavy. Um, and if you do put too much on, just water it down again on the model. And you can even dab it away with the brush if you feel you've put on too much, like I probably have um, down the bottom there. So with the shade drying, I then finish off the base of the model with a Zandri dust equivalent. It's actually an oil-based paint I've got spare left over that I want to get rid of. And then I start choosing um, some transfers from all the various spare transfer sheets, which I'm sure like uh, you have got piled up, ready to be used. The principle I apply here is I try to apply um, a transfer in every single angle you look at on this terrain piece. So it doesn't matter which way on the tabletop it's sitting, you're going to see a bit of this detail. I think they're really good. They add an extra uh, layer of detail or effort per se uh, to the terrain piece. Um, you can see there I've got the Imperial Eagle, uh, proudly displayed there. Had a barcode before next to the charge pack. Then I finish off with a number five placed on various angles as well. Right, so at this point the, uh, the terrain piece is actually finished. All I have left to do is apply some snow effects, but if your guys aren't working in a snow environment, then the model's all done. Um, you get a good sense for how big it is compared to the, uh, the four veterans I've placed on each corner of the terrain piece. And actually you can see it's... It's quite big, which definitely could uh, block line of sight for an infantry squad. Um, but as I said, I apply um, some snow effects now. And firstly, is a product by uh, the Army Painter. It's like a white sand. Um, and I mix it in with PVA glue. And uh, again, like this just before, I start off with a little bit of PVA glue and work my way up. And basically get quite a clumpy, sandy-like feel. I then put it on the model where I believe snow would naturally settle or build up. So obviously the nooks and crannies of the cement and also right up against the, uh, the corners and the edges of the, the fuel um, can, so to say. Now using um, hairspray, and a great product by Precision Ice and Snow, um, which is like a really fine talcum powder, or a flower even, um, you basically spray hairspray. At this point, I'm putting on way too much hairspray, so definitely don't do as much as I do. Maybe probably maximum about five bursts from the can. You then sprinkle on with the sieve, um, this flower-like substance. You can already tell I've put on way too much. You then need to basically tap away at the model so all the excess comes off. That should be enough at this point, but I actually now use a, a very soft tip paintbrush to remove all the excess as well. What's also happened is um, this really fine substance has got caught in all the um, textured areas of the fuel canisters. So use a brush to get rid of that as well. So there you have it. Simple terrain piece made from stuff you find around the house. Hope you found it interesting and helpful. And the main thing I hope I've done is inspired you to try making your own. If you've got any of um, you've made yourself, please share with me um, some photos uh, via Instagram where my username is also Guardsman Hannon, so please tag me in the photo. As said, I've adopted this particular piece uh, for a snow environment, but of course you don't have to, so save a bit of time if you didn't do that. So any questions or comments, put them in the comments section. Let me know what you think about this uh, terrain uh, building video. My channel is all about astromilitarium and the world of 40k and I cover hobby basics, assembling, 
kit bashing, painting, and also tabletop tactics. So if you enjoy that sort of thing, uh, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.